एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम In previous videos, we have talked about the basic de basic description of atomic structure in light of quantum mechanical model, Schrödinger equation, and we have seen that how atomic orbitals are depicted. Not only this, we have also talked about molecular orbitals, and we have also seen that how crystal field splitting occurs. Now, this is slightly different topic. We'll be looking at energy levels, but not in an atom or a molecule, rather at a gross scale. so if you look at a complete matter for example if you look at the crystal of any uh, any metal or any non metal then in that case you will find that there are hundreds or hundreds or even thousands of atoms clustered together connected together through the chemical bonding now what is the energy state of electrons in that case can we explain it with the help of quantum mechanical model is the energy state discrete Welcome to Ashan Academy my name is Aditya and you're watching engineering chemistry videos if you want to learn more about this topic you can refer this book from Ashan publishing you can find link for ebook in the description box below so here in this video we'll be talking about that particular topic called band structure in solids which is associated with a gross scale electronic distribution in a matter now in order to understand this topic let me remind you that in discrete or isolated atom you have certain energy levels if i just draw a basic structure of an atom so you have nucleus in the center and electrons are spinning around it that was based on the classical model and as per the modern quantum mechanical model you have waves of electrons which are traveling around the nucleus so these waves can actually be seen in the form of orbitals and every orbital or every electron has fixed energy which is represented by energy levels so you can represent the atomic energy levels as 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p and so on so these energy levels can be depicted like this and you can also depict the energy levels for molecules when they form molecular orbitals which we have seen in previous uh, videos already if you have not watched them you can go back and watch videos on molecular orbitals molecular orbital energy distribution and field splitting now the concept here is when you have a matter which is made up of several thousands or millions of atoms or millions of molecules then each of the atom which has got electrons in it some of the electrons are capable of interacting with other atoms and those are called as valence electrons so suppose there is an atom and the outermost orbit has this particular electron which is capable of participating in chemical bonding so this will be called as valence electron whereas rest of the electrons which are not participating in bonding they are called as inner electrons now comparing the energies if you look at the energy diagrams of a discrete atom you will find that inner electrons are comparatively much more stable whereas outer electrons like 2s or 3s they will have relatively higher energies and they are likely to get eliminated or they are likely to get off from the atom if some energy is provided to them so usually electrons will not go out of an atom they will be bound by forces of the nuclear pull and they will always remain associated with an atom but since they are waves and they are also participating in chemical bonding these waves can transfer elsewhere not in all atoms but in some atoms so now that is something very very interesting and it is very useful resulting in a property of certain mater materials which is called electrical conduction you know that metals conduct electricity why do they do so how can they do so 
So electrons which are present in the metal, in the valence shell, they acquire some energy, reach to the higher energy state and they often leave the atom. And they can then transfer to the next atom, the next atom can transfer energy to the next atom. So this is how electricity can flow across the metal block. Now we can also relate this in terms of energies and that is what band theory comes in. The band theory of, of solids, which is very, very crucial and very important for solid state physics, those who want to go in electronics field or manufacturing of electronic devices, they must be familiar with this particular concept of uh, bands in solids. Now these bands in solids, uh, they are actually defined as uh, energy levels or energy differences in the electrons. To be more specific, in solid state physics, the electronic band structure or simply it is called as band structure of a solid, it describes the range of energy levels that electrons may have within it as well as the ranges of energy that it may not have. So there can be possibly two energy levels. One is called as the possible energy level which is present in a matter and another one is called as forbidden energy level which is there but electrons have not reached there. So that's the first concept related to the band structure. Now this can be applied in a lot of places like development of semiconductors, all the modern computers and chips and devices that you are using today, even the camera with which I am recording and the computer with which you are watching this video, all of them have semiconductor chips. Now how these semiconductors have been developed and how they can be improved, their quality can be improved that is all associated with change or modulation of these bands by inducing some chemicals or by changing their crystal structures. So band theory is very, very important to understand for improving the performance of existing semiconductor mo molecules such as transistors and semiconductor materials. Now band theory derives these bands, uh, band gaps by examining the quantum mechanical wave function. So you can connect it with the first lecture that we have seen related to this particular topic. We talked about wave function already. We looked at this wave function psi which basically defines the location and time of any electronic wave in terms of Schrodinger wave equation which was time dependent. So based on these properties like periodic lattice, when you extend this beyond an atom, when you extend this to a lattice or a crystal, suppose there is an array of atoms which is present in this crystal and you have extended your theory of uh, wave function to each of these atoms, you can get a very, very complex mathematical function that can define the presence of electron and the energy of electron. So energy of electron in a crystal will be slightly different than what we see in a discrete atom. So all the atoms, when they collectively form a crystal, then their collective electrons will have a band of energies rather than a discrete line of energies. I mean, instead of having a specific point which can define the energy of an electron, which was found in discrete atom, you will have a band of energy. which will be describing a collective set of electrons present in a lattice. So that is basically the origin of band concept uh, and the band theory, which explains the bands of energies. Now these bands are not only of one type. There is a band which represent the valence electron energies. I mean, the electrons which are present as a valence electron here, that will constitute a band which is called as valence band. But there will also be a forbidden band, another band which will be responsible for properties like conduction of electricity. That means when these electrons skip an atom and they start freely moving inside the matter, they will have different set of energy and they will constitute a different band which is called as conduction band. So the entire logic or entire concept of band theory lies in the fact that in a crystal or lattice or a macromolecular structure, we have two distinct bands. One is the conduction band and another 
is called as balanced band and it is possible for some molecules some some material where electrons can jump from conduction band to balance band they will become highly conductive and there can be some material where it is never possible for an electron to jump from conduction to uh, balance band balance band to conduction band they will be insulators whereas for some it will be possible only under specific condition and they will fall under the category of semiconductors so the entire concept of band theory that is splitting of this discrete energy of atoms into the form of bands which can be further represented by distinct ranges of uh, distinct ranges of bands which can have different widths and which can change depending upon the nature of which can change depending upon the nature of material so this is the overall picture uh, which we can draw or which we can conclude from our discussion since now we can have energy diagram made just like the energy diagram we made for molecular orbitals just like energy diagram we made for atomic orbitals where we had a distinct position like for 1s for 2s for 2p but right now we have an entire band so there is a band of energy which is representing the valence band there is another band which you can see here conduction band which is present at higher energy state now this band is also not uniform if you look at the x axis which is representing interatomic distances suppose two atoms are this far in a lattice then these two bands will be at a different distance but if you try to bring these atoms close in a lattice and the moment when they become very very close and their atomic orbitals begin to coincide or there is a partial overlap of atomic orbitals you can imagine that electrons from one atom can freely move to another atom and that is the point where these two bands can actually converge down so you can have these two bands sometimes converging down into single band and that is what is a relationship uh, of these two bands with the interatomic distances and that makes certain molecules conductive certain molecules non conductive so we will now stop here while we have understood that what is band theory and what band means in the second part of the video we will continue our discussion and we'll we briefly talk about how these bands will define and differentiate metals non metals or conductors non conductors and semiconductors if you want to learn more about this topic you can refer this book from s chan publishing you can find link for ebook in the description box below you can like share and subscribe the channel for continuous use and regular updates Resolved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.